Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Linda and this is Ashley and we are nursing educators. You are joining us for In the Know where we make it simple. Uh, today we are simplifying the NCLEX logarithm. 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 There are a lot of myths around the NCLEX exam. So Linda's going to talk a little bit about um, things that aren't necessarily true, rumors you may have heard. If you're in any of the online forums, um, these are a lot of questions that come up all the time around how the NCLEX decides if you pass, if you fail, how many questions you write, um, and the list just goes on and on and on. So we're just going to talk a little bit about the myths around um, the NCLEX exam before we tell you how it actually works. Not understanding how the exam works can create a lot of anxiety and fear in writers. And when you get afraid, uh, that can really impact whether you pass or fail this exam. Uh, so there's many myths around the number of questions. So some people believe that uh, if you write 265, you will fail. Uh, some people believe if you write 75, you, were pa you will pass. Well, the, the truth is you can pass and fail at, at any number of questions. So, uh, you, could, you know, it can go past 75, you could pass and fail at 120 questions, mm -hmm. right? So it isn't true that it's definitive about the number of questions that you write. Another myth is that uh, when you get a question wrong, the exam takes you down a path of that content area. That is also a myth, that is not true. So these are some of the myths out there. So logarithm in itself is, first of all, hard to spell. And second of all is a scary word. What it means is it's basically, um, you might remember programming logarithms in on your calculator in grade 12 math or something like this. It's basically some type of mathematical automated calculation that's applied to the NCLEX. Basically decide if you pass or if you fail, which for them means you are safe to practice, unsafe to practice, also known as competent for practice or incompetent for practice. So it actually takes data based on your responses to questions and kind of grades them and decides whether or not it's going to shut off. So um, no two people write the same exam. It's important that you understand that. So well, obviously you're gonna to talk to your friend about their experience writing the NCLEX or somebody that wrote it the year before you, obviously you wanna get their feedback, but just remember you will not receive the same questions they received. You will probably not write the same amount of questions they wrote. Um, and you cannot compare your own exam experience to anybody else's because no two exam experiences are the same. Um, so it's really important you understand how this works. We're just gonna draw a simple picture that's gonna make it make a whole lot more sense to you and hopefully relieve some of that fear and anxiety you might have, okay? So I'm just gonna refer to the screen here and we're going to make it simple. So um, how the NCLEX commences is with a passing line. So everybody basically starts right here on this passing line. Everybody that writes the NCLEX is not going to be above it or below it. They're going to start right here. Every individual starts on the passing line. It's important to understand that we have low level questions and we have high level questions. High level questions. If you're not sure what those are, you can refer to a previous Facebook Live where we talked about the difference between low level and high level questions. Um, an example might be a low level question would be a simple recalling a lab value like the normal potassium is 3.5 to 5, whereas a high level question might be having you make a decision based on an abnormal lab value, just to give you an idea. Um, above the passing line would be safe for practice, so this would be a pass, and below the passing line would be unsafe for practice, and therefore would be a fail. So what happens? You are on the passing line and this is where you start. You get the first question which is asking you, the nurse knows that the normal sodium level is, multiple choice, correct answer, is 3.5 to 5. So simple knowing content. So if you get that right, you go up one space. Okay, so you're one level above the passing line here. If you get another question right, you're gonna go up two spaces. Now the questions are higher level questions. They're going to start to get harder. Okay, if you get the next question wrong, you go back down to one space above the passing line, which is okay because you're still not on the passing line or below the passing line. If you get the next question right, you're still above the passing line, 
The beautiful thing about being here is because you could theoretically get every other question right and wrong and you are never going above or below the passing line. So this person would pass, even if they get every other question wrong at that point. Once you're two levels above the passing line, you can get every other question wrong and still be successful. However, the opposite of this would be getting the first question right, getting the next question wrong, you're now on the passing line but not above it or below it, getting the next one right, getting the next one wrong, you're not consistently above it or consistently below it. These individuals, if you keep going up and down, up and down, or maybe even down then up, down then up, up and down, you will write all the way to 265 questions because the computer cannot decide whether you are safe and competent or unsafe and incompetent. The opposite can be true as well. If you get one question right, you get the new, next two questions wrong, you can hear get in a series of incorrect questions and never get back above that passing line and you will fail and be considered unsafe. So you will write anywhere from 75 to 265 questions. You can pass or fail in 75, you can pass or fail in 265, and what's going to decide that is consistently and staying above on or below that passing line for a period of time, if you will. So given this picture example that Ashley has just uh, drawn for you, what are, there's three key elements really that must come together. The first one is content. You have got to know your content. That is just, you just have to. <laughs> you have to study for this exam. You have to know your content. That is how you pass it, okay? by knowing your content, it's critical. The second thing is critical thinking. You must be able to answer higher level questions above simple knowledge. You need to be able to apply it and synthesize it. You need to be able to make decisions, right, based on two or three pieces of information. Critical thinking is a big part of this exam. You must be able to critical th critically think. And finally, the third, uh, important element is emotional readiness. You can see how going up and down and up and down across this and as you get to hour two, you get to hour three, you get to hour four, how you emotionally be can become unraveled. This is something that you must prepare for. Um, not going into this exam thinking I'm gonna be done in an hour and I'm gonna write 75. Do not go in with any assumptions like that. You have to go in prepared to stay the full length, right? You have to be emotionally pre prepared before you sit down to write this exam for any of these kind of alternatives to happen so that you don't lose it emotionally and become unraveled because this is what can fail you mm -hmm. is just coming unglued, okay? So these are the three very important elements. So what we've done with Empowerment Nursing is we wanted to give the content, give the critical thinking, and give the confidence through emotional readiness, which is what our complete study package brings together as well. This comes with our video library um, where we teach you the critical application of all of this content within the textbook and cue cards and prepares you emotionally. So we help this live has helped solidify those three things and their importance as well as help take some of the anxiety and fear out of how the NCLEX logarithm decides whether or not a student passes or fails um, by simplifying it, that for you. Um, we invite you to join us next week on In The Know and subscribe to our live videos so you'll be notified on your Facebook page whenever we are live. Like and share this video with your nursing friends to help them understand the logarithm of the NCLEX. Um, be sure to follow our Facebook page and check out our website at www.n-powermentnursing.com where you can have free access to our entire cardiac chapter um, free through the free trial as well as view our complete study package and we will see you next time on In the Know. Bye for now. Bye for now.